right, I hope you like that cinematic intro. Anyways, it's been more than 3 months since I'm using VM1 Pro MacBook Pro, so I thought I'd share my opinion about it with you. Some things I hate about it, some things I really like about it, and also some problems I have with it after using it more than 3 months. This is not going to be an in-depth review or something like that, it's just me expressing my own opinion, my own experience after using it more than 3 months. And also because this channel is mostly about motion design, I'm going to discuss a little bit the performance of the Amon Pro with After Effects, how it handles After Effects, how it performs with After Effects. And then at the very end, uh, I will tell you my honest opinion about it, my overall opinion, if it's worth it or not, because honestly, it's a very expensive laptop. So let's get into it. Regarding the configuration, I have the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, 16GB RAM, and 10-core CPU and 16-core GPU. I still can't believe how Apple managed to get such a good balance between battery and performance, so shout out to all the Apple engineers because the battery life on this MacBook is just insane. So check this out, I have my Mac connected to an external monitor, I was using Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro and also browsing through Safari and after 9 hours of use I still had about 30% battery as you can see here in the screen recording. Obviously I was not editing continuously for 9 hours, some of the time I was just watching YouTube videos but still taking in consideration all that, I think it's very impressive and this is without a doubt the best part of the M1 MacBooks. The design is well astonishing and beautiful. I don't really have to say much about it except the notch because this one is somehow debatable. Some people hate the notch, others love it and others don't really care about it. I have to say that I find myself in this last situation and I'm not bothered by the notch at all. I even forgot about it and remembered it's there only when I took the pictures for this video. Most applications just wrap the menu bar around it so in this way you have more screen real estate and if you want to get rid of it you can't cause it's physically there. What, you thought I was gonna propose a solution to this? Joking aside, there are some apps on the internet that give the impression of an invisible notch by blacking out the top part of the wallpaper. So yeah, there's a solution to this if you really hate it. As of the ports, well, thank you Mr. Tim Apple for bringing back what was already on the oldest MacBooks. So on one side we have the charging port, two USB-C ports and one headphone jack port. And on the other side we have an SD card port, one USB-C and one HDMI port. I still had to buy a hub with some USB-A ports, but besides that you have everything you need. Considering I was using a Windows laptop before, there are some things that bother me in terms of usability, but other than that, I really like everything about it. Especially the trackpad. It's so good that many times I find myself using the trackpad instead of the mouse when editing in After Effects, so that's a pretty big deal. Nevertheless, I have some sound problems related to this MacBook. I don't know if it's just mine or this problem persists on the entire M1 series, but the sound suddenly stops working and I have to force reset the core audio the task from activity monitor in order to make it work again. And the funny thing is that even if all audio devices are missing, the sound works on all apps which are developed by Apple, like Safari or music, but it doesn't work on anything else. So if you encountered such problems, please let me know in the comments. So let's first start with the settings of this project. I have here a 9020 by 1080 pixel composition, 24 fps and a couple of layers, not too many but not too few either, all set to have resolution. The important thing is that they are all 3D layers, so this project consists of editing lots of 3D layers that are mostly images and some of them graphic elements. And this is important because if I make a project with only graphic elements, like a logo animation for example, then After Effects runs, let's say, decent. But the moment I introduce lots of 3D images combined with graphic elements and other 3D compositions, then you pretty much can quit After Effects and call it a day. So as you can see, I was trying to move an image and even though I changed the position, it took like 6 seconds for it to move. Now if I open the activity monitor, I can see that After Effects was using almost 15GB of memory, so that's over 90% of all memory. And this is the main problem with this configuration, because 16GB of RAM memory isn't just enough for After Effects. I can obviously go and check the disk cache, maybe try to clear it if it's full, but as you can see I already did that and there was only 2.4GB to clean so it really didn't matter at all. Now it's even worse, I was just moving through timeline and it took like 12 seconds for the image to appear, so yeah, it's just a pain to all like that. I've actually given up working on this project after spending tens of hours just because it's impossible to finish it. Now let's see how it goes with another project. So this is a logo animation I made for a client and before starting out let's go to media in this cache and clear the cache. Let's also purge all memory and this cache. I don't know if there's a difference between clearing the disk cache and purging the memory and this cache but let's do it anyway. Okay it's done. 
and now I can press play to run Previt. It's struggling a little bit, but keep in mind that I have some 3D layers, as you can see, and I'm also on full resolution. Let's change it anyway to half resolution and see how it handles it. I speeded up the video a little bit, but it took like 40 seconds to finish the run Preview render, so I would say it's a decent time. I can work just fine, I can modify my shapes or add other layers, and whenever I want, I can just run Preview to see how my animation looks without any problem. In contrast to the other project, that was literally frozen and I couldn't do anything. So the overall opinion about the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Let's say that you don't use After Effects, then it's really great, I would recommend this to anyone, it's really a beast. Now if you're using After Effects, I'd still recommend it, but only for live projects. So no lots of 3D layers, multiple 4K compositions or tons of effects because as you've seen, it won't handle it well. So if you're going for complex projects, just go at least for the 32GB RAM version. But even if you go with that, please don't imagine that it will run perfectly smooth because with any configuration you'd have, be it a desktop or laptop, After Effects will still be lagging. Alright, that was all. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.